All right, greetings everyone. Um, my name is Marvin Turner. Uh, I'm originally from Atlanta. I currently attend Morehouse College studying computer science. Uh, and welcome to all to come. <laughs> um, during the talk, uh, if you have any questions or if you want to engage in conversation afterwards, feel free to uh, tweet, tweet me at, uh, at Marvin K. Turner. Um, and there's also an Autocom post I made on my blog at blog.marvinkturner.com. Um, there's a discus feed at the bottom where you can leave comments and questions as well. Um, so I want to talk about the great disparity in STEM. Uh, first of all, I want to start off by defining a minority as an individual who does not uh, identify themselves as non-Hispanic or white alone or in combination with any other uh, ethnicity. And that's from a definition that I derived from the U.S. Census Bureau, the uh, publishing that they made for, from the 2010 census in the year 2011. Um, from that same document, I was able to extrapolate that minorities make up 33.9% of the current population in the U.S. And they make up 33.2% of the college age population. But minorities only make up around 17.7% of those who hold advanced degrees in uh, STEM, the science, technology, engineering, and math. So according to current population growth rates, um, by the year 2040, we will have a minority majority. And that's a phenomenon where collectively all the minority groups add up to more than the largest single group. So the, currently the largest single group is, of course, Caucasians or white Americans. Um, but by the year 2040, um, all the minority groups will be more than, um, will hold more of their population than Caucasians. And that's important because they hold um, these minorities hold a significantly lower amount of uh, tech jobs or just, just tech degrees, period. Um, and if they're going to be the majority, then we need to step up and fill those roles or else they will be uh, un untaking jobs. Um, well, yeah, I just touched on that point. Um, so the unemployment rate, well, why should this even be important? Why should minorities even go into STEM? Um, we want to highlight that the unemployment rate for a PhD in computing field is 0.8% as referenced by the 2012-2013 uh, Talby survey, which is released by the Computing Research Association. They do a survey every year where they take statistics from um, a, certain no a certain number of uh, computer science, computer engineering, and informatics departments across the nation. And they run statistics on, these, uh, on the data to find out um, certain trends about enrollment in the computer field. The national unemployment rate for a computing professional is 3.5% compared with 9.6% for Latinos or Latina um, people and 13.8% for African Americans. And that's from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And in that same document, you can find that the average salary for a computing professional is around $77,000. That's a big number. I want you to remember that. $77,000. Everybody say that. $77,000. Say that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So, um, moving on to the war on poverty. Uh, if anybody watched the Academy Awards this past week, um, Patricia Arquette made, in her seventh speech, she made, uh, she talked about wage equality. She focused on women, but it's important to minorities as well. Um, and also uh, opportunity equality. Jesse Jackson did a, well, he w was interviewed for an article in the USA Today, and he said that there's not a shortage of, of jobs, but there's a shortage of opportunity, meaning that um, there are certain um, there are certain barriers for entry for minorities in the tech community. And he, in that same in that same vein, Jesse Jackson um, led the charge to press a certain number of uh, tech companies in Silicon Valley to release their diversity uh, statistics as far as uh, employment. So the median uh, computer professional salary is seventy seven thousand dollars. Remember that number? Yeah? Okay, so that's more than a median salary for a black family, which is around $32,000, plus the median salary for a Latino family, which is $37,000, almost $38,000. That's a lot of money. Anecdotal references um, that you'll see on the next slide suggest that certain internships, these are internships for higher level undergraduates, juniors and seniors, and maybe some, well, some grad students, and some, maybe some higher level undergraduates. Uh, the bottom is about 6 k a month plus a housing site. Um And the, high, the, high, the highest ranges are within the $10,000 range. So on the next slide, um, this came from Twitter. 
a student was lining up some offers from that they were getting for internships and that some of their friends had gotten for taking internships. And I just want to highlight a couple of them. You can see um, Cora at the top is 8200 plus 1500 for housing. You have Dropbox 8.5K plus 5000 for housing. Um, Google is about 7000 a month. You have Apple somewhere down there. Um, I can't find it. But Amazon is 6K plus 2.5 a month. Um, Amazon in San Francisco is 7.5K. Oh yeah, Apple right here, 6K, 6K plus 3.5K per month of housing. <coughs> so where do we go from here? Um, if anybody knows, that's a title from a Martin Luther King speech. Um, he, a lot of people get caught up on I Have a Dream, but they don't um, really focus on um, Martin Luther King's Poor People's Committee um, that he um, started to assemble right before he was unfortunately assassinated. Um, he wanted to focus on economic inequality and uh, racial issues because just allowing blacks to, um, or giving us the rights to go and do certain things that we couldn't do before, it wouldn't mean as much if we don't have the opportunities to get ahead. Um, well, financial opportunities lead to um, better lifestyles. And the argument was that uh, how are we able to engage in the pursuit of happiness that's in the Declaration of Independence if we don't have the same opportunities as other people have? So just um, leaning on that point, I wanted to, I guess, make what I think is a, a, a valuable or a good uh, plan moving forward for encouraging a strong pipeline in STEM. And so you want to encourage minority students that are in grade school, K-12, to explore their interest in STEM um, and in other sciences and offer support programs for them either after school, before school, to keep them engaged and keep them involved, um, keep them out of trouble in the streets and whatnot. Um, you want to support minority students that are currently in undergraduate programs in college or university and educate them on available uh, jobs once they finish. Some, some students don't know that they can go on and get a master's and a PhD and be in academia and have a pretty stable job. Some people just think they have to go work for another company. Some people don't really know how to start their own company, so they, they don't really want to get into it, but that's actually like the biggest thing right now. Um, and finally, you, I want to see um, more offers for minority academics and professionals to attend conferences. Um, normally, they're left on their own and kind of like apply and qualify on their own. Um, and when they take these certain offers, I want to pressure them to bring up minorities behind them. Um, so it's a constant pipeline. They're coming up and they're bringing up people behind them. Um, now, uh, well, talking about accessing computing jobs, uh, there's a Workforce in Innovation and Opportunity Act, which was signed in August 2014 by President Obama, um, which leads to, uh, it, it kind of harps on that point that I was just speaking on before, just um, a plan for the next few years to uh, engage people in STEM and uh, sciences to uh, better prepare them for the workforce and have skills that employers are looking for. Another program from President Obama is My Brother's Keeper, which he enacted in, uh, about a year ago. It's February 27th of 2014. Um, and that was for uh, Latino and black male youth to keep them uh, engaged in school. Kind of like the same thing for K-12. Um, I don't want to talk so much about that because uh, in computing, females are actually a minority too. So we don't want to, uh, I don't want to argue too much on My Brother's Keeper because that's, it, it deals with male issues, but there's a female issue as well. Um, the Code 2040 Fellowship Program focuses on that uh, minority majority point that I spoke on about um, in the year 2040. So they have a fellowship program where students can go and do internships at companies in, uh, excuse me, in the Silicon Valley, and they have, I think, above a 70, 80 percent. Uh, success rate with students who do uh, internships with those companies go on and get uh, hired on as a full-time uh, employee. Uh, another similar uh, institution is the Concord Center for Social Impact. And uh, another entry into the tech fields for minorities is internships that we spoke of before, which 
One is Apple Software Inclusion and Diversity Engineering Internship. Uh, I personally, as a student, have traveled to several conferences um, and participated in several initiatives that were that had the aim of increasing minorities in computer and computer science. Uh, I was a C scholar in the year 2013 and 2014. Um, C stands for the Extreme Science and Engineering Discovery Environment. Um, basically, uh, I dealt with high performance computing. Another uh, conference that I went to was supercomputing. Uh, and those programs opened my eyes to a lot of what was going on in uh, computing outside of what I was learning in academia. Um, I didn't really know a lot about uh, what I could do besides programming, but it really uh, got me interested in research and further my education. So some of the good things about those type of programs is that underrepresented minorities, um, they get to attend highly technical events that have this paradigm to um, they get funding and lodging into attending these events, which can be very expensive just with the conference uh, attendance fee alone. But in thinking, you know, taking into account the cost of flights and hotel rooms, that's all uh, funded for them. And it's awesome networking opportunities. You can meet uh, professors that you can apply to for graduate school, um, or maybe even network with a professional and get a job or internship. But the bad is that. In these programs, they have some, a lot of times they have a separate curriculum for students in the program. So you don't get the full home conference experience, you kind of get a watered down um, experience where they try to prepare you for um, the regular conference experience. And that can be good if you don't really know anything. So like the first conference I went to was awesome because it taught me some things I didn't know, but by the second and third time, I was like, well, I want to you know, do what everybody else is doing. So oh, I guess that can be a bad thing. Um, this is a picture from XC 2013, and it just, I just want to illustrate like how how many blacks and Latinos like are actually supported in these groups. Um, that's from the Supercomputing Conference 2013 in Denver. Um, and as I can, as I was saying, like um, the, you have you have this. Uh, cohort of students that you kind of get to meet and know and you kind of hang around each other, but you kind of have this tendency of, of hanging around people that are like you, so you don't interact with everybody else. Like, there are a lot of other people of other races in the room, but we just kind of collect it together, so I, I just want to be weary of that. Um, that was here in Atlanta, um, XC 2014. But, uh, oh, I got, I got to that earlier. But the students end up being sorted out of the general uh, population of the conference. So it ends up being the same thing that they were uh, trying to avoid. And you end up with a, a, a general conference that looks something like this. There aren't many minorities in this picture. And that's another uh, demonstration from SC13. But what we need is minority students who attend present and compete with those in the regular program. And we want, to, want greater support for minority faculty who may bring other minority students. Um, so that we can have pictures like this, and this, and this. Um, this is from the Tapia uh, Celebration of Diversity in Computing. It's a conference that deals with diversity. So there are, the, the crowd is a lot more diverse. That is the actual, that is one of the plenary talks um, but I kind of want to see conferences like Exceed and Supercomputing that see look more like this. And it, it'll take a while for more and more and more students and academic professionals to go through the pipeline and, and gain their the technical credentials they need to apply to these type of events. But um, it, it's something to hope for. So now I want to leave some time for any questions or comments that anybody might have that they want to voice. No questions. All right. I actually really love talking about money, and I really like talking about salaries. So I was wondering if you could share some of the stories or uh, feelings you get from people when you cite things like the salary is this time the amount of what is difficult. I mean, like what. How, what is the visceral response from people when you engage with, with, that, with those kind of the past? 
and you say, like, look, this is how it really is. Well, of course, um, when I'm thinking of people in, in my particular ethnic group, I mean, we're kind of blown back because, I mean, like, $32,000, like, that's me. Like, that's what these statistics say that I should be making. But I'm in this particular profession that should be making this much money. Um, so I'm not really super concerned because I am a, a computer scientist, but for somebody who might be in art, or somebody who might be in English or, or math or something else, I think it hits them harder because they're not actually in the field. Um, when I speak to people who aren't uh, black or Latino, like Latino, um, they're not affected as much. I mean, of course, because they fit into the other group. I was just curious if you were with your comments, what did you do to increase its diversity in the field? It's a lower barrier, et cetera. Well, um, there was a particular program that I participated in at the Super Computer Conference called Broad Engagement. And this program, uh, it had two tracks. It, one called the the online ramp, and one called the super highway. So it kind of already solved the problem that I that I stated earlier about um, separating students from the general program and having to do uh, sometimes menial or, or lower quality tasks. Well, not lower quality, but easier things that um, they would be able to grasp by the end of the program and get them started in high performance computers. Um, I would kind of want to emulate something like that so our students who are interested but didn't really know much could come in and learn something, but students who already were prepared could uh, enter into the general program and uh, compete for awards and advantage. 